Okay, I squared up the whole T-slot table by scraping and some milling and I just set it up on the milling machine and bored out the first of the two bearing holes. I used again the Wohlhopter boring head, I bored it to 27 millimeters and then I did a facing cut and I faced a, a nice flat surface onto the bore. Next step will be to flip the part around, indicate the, the bore from the other side and open up the other hole. So I already loosened the clamping screws back there. And then I can pull it off T-slot T-bolts. As you can see I used um, bolts with a T-nut to hold it against this box parallel. And here you can again see the bore with the nice facing cut. Okay, I flipped the table around and the machined bore is now on the bottom and as on the base of the angle plate I'm again indicating the machined bore around the unmachined one. I don't have to indicate again in this direction because I have the box parallel as my reference surface. I only have to indicate in the X direction which is pretty simple because my indicator holder can reach around the upper bearing block here and I can sweep 180 degrees around like this. We're good to bore the upper bearing hole and then do a face cut on the other diameter. Running at 500 rpm. Ooh. And we're retracting without the spindle running. And as you can see, we are 27.0. We hit our target dimension very well. And now we change our tool because this is a boring bar for through holes. We need one for facing. The facing one has the cutter at 45 degrees. And if you remember, I showed making these boring bars in another video. Link down in the description if you're interested. Now we have to set the boring head for facing. First thing is to press in this pin right here and to pull out this pin up here. And that engages the gear drive for the fine feed and when I turn this upper ring the lower one moves slow as you can see. And that uh, moves the, the slide or carriage of the boring head very slowly while the machine is running. You will see what I mean when, when we have it running and I will just hold it with the fingers while the machine is running. And I'm just looking how far out we are. Okay, I won't go any further. Now normally you would have to hand crank it back, but that's uh, not the nicest way. We disengage the fine feed and re-engage the standard feed. And we turn on the machine. 
and hold the ring again. And we can quick retract the tool. Or qu yeah, quick, quick retract. Now we go back, we re-engage the fine feed. We move our cutter down slightly. 0.2 millimeters and take another cut. Okay, I got a, an even surface over the whole um, block here. Now we can get our tool out of the way, do a last retract. Ooh. Okay, that was a bit. Okay. And get the tool out of the way. By the way, the feed um, the feed rate per revolution, like on a lathe, on this boring head is fixed. It's about 0.07 millimeters per revolution. On the bigger Wohlehopter boring heads like the UPA3, UPA4 and bigger, you can set the feed rate in increments of 500 of a millimeter, I think. And then it gets really neat. Um, one day when I find a suitable UPA3 boring head, I will buy it just to have, to, to have the whole range. A UPA2 would be nice too. <laughs> okay, this is a jump forward in time. I didn't film some of the work I did between the boring, um, the boring of the bearing blocks and the current state of the table, but it's nothing spectacular, apart that it's now a complete tilting table. I machined two rings. These are just steel rings which are slit and have a clamping screw and they are bolted onto the onto the T-slot side of the table and these act as the new clamping arrangement for the table. The original design was that the bolt, the, the pivot bolts had a thread on the end and a nut but the problem with that design was when you tightened down the nuts, you moved, of course, the table in the angle setting. And with this design, this doesn't happen anymore as there, as you don't torque on the pivot. You're just tightening down this uh, five millimeter screw, M5 screw. And I have a clamping ring like this on both sides. And I turned the pivot bolts, there are two pivot bolts, each of them is turned so they fit very close into the bores and as you can see with the um, clamping open, it doesn't move out by its own. So, but there is one thing missing, um, if I tighten down the clamping screws, I can still move the table. And why? Because the pivot bolts are turning within the base plate. When you look closely, I make a small red dot here. When I tilt the table, the bolts move with the table. So I have to mount these bolts rigid into, rigidly into the um, base plate and 
For that we have to take it apart, of course. We have to loosen. So now I have to find a way to mount these bolts um, rigidly so they don't turn in the bores. And there is already a keyway. That's, <laughs> yep, that's a snug fit. Uh, there is already a keyway and I might use this. We might just machine a, a key, key slot into the bolts and use a 6mm key which fits, oh, which fits very tightly into the keyways here. And that might be just a simple solution for that problem. Okay, we're over at the milling machine and we have to machine a keyway into the thicker end of this bolt to fit the 6mm key. I already did the first one and I have my setup dialed in. I have a V-block. This is from a recent eBay purchase. This is out of a set of um, uh, a chick making set like Lego for machinists. You get V blocks, you, you get big T slot parts, and you and all these parts are keyed and indexed together. So you can build up very fast, very complicated and very accurate jigs. And I got a lot on eBay with about six or seven parts from this uh, set or from the system and they all are very nicely made. They are all hardened, they are ground within five thousandths of a millimeter square and parallel over a distance of hundred millimeter and they are just nicely made. Made in Germany of course. Um, and I'm using this V-block right now. I dropped the V-block in the vise against my stop. And I take my bolt and clamp it between the jaws. Taking the full 3.5 mm deep cut in one pass and then we will widen the slot to fit the key. Okay, there we go. Okay, and this is a, and this is a bit on the tight side. I might give it a, a hair more. Just shaving off a few more molecules and this is a nice tight fit that's how I like a, a key slot perfect I'm happy okay. um, before I end this video somebody mentioned to me that um, the keyway alone is not sufficient to hold the um, swivel bolts without any backlash in uh, the base plate. And they are absolutely right. For one, the pin can move um, axially because there is, um, a, uh, there is no uh, locking element and also it can wiggle slightly in the keyway as every keyway has at least a uh, very small amount of of gap between uh, between the keyway and the key so i was thinking about a good way to lock to to add a second locking element to each of the swivel to each of the swivel bolts to make them 
absolutely stay in place and what I decided to do and what maybe the most simple and obvious solution is a dial pin. I'm going to clamp this uh, whole angle table up on the milling machine. I will move in 50 millimeters and drill through the casting, through the swivel bolt and into the casting again with a 5 millimeter drill, ream it and then I'm going to set in a long hardened dowel pin that will lock the, the swivel bolt once and for all. Of course I have to use a dowel pin with a thread on the end so I can pull it out if I want to disassemble the table. Everything else would be just plain stupid if you um, pound in a, um, a dowel pin without a thread or a or some other ways to grip it and pull it out. So that's important and we'll just go to the milling machine and set this up and drill and ream these two holes. I wanted to get this out of the way before I end this video <laughs> before um, otherwise I will get about 200 comments and ask me um, if the keyway or the key is good enough to, to hold the this will be bolts in place and the answer is no. Okay, I clamped the table up against my box parallel with two Bessie clamps and I used the edge finder to find my positions where I wanted to drill and I'm going to start with the 120 degree starter drill. Okay, now we pre-drill with a 4mm twist drill at the right RPM. This is a 4.8 mm drill bit. And I change to a 5 mm machine reamer. Okay, and I decided um, to drill the holes completely through so I can um, knock out the dowel pins from the backside with a long punch because I couldn't find any dowel pins, long dowel pins with a pull-out thread in my shop. So I made an extended drill bit, I just took a piece of 4mm drill rod, drilled it in the end and glued in a 2.5mm high-speed steel drill to have a long extended drill that could go all the way through. Okay, I cut two pieces off from a um, ejector pin and I run it over the edges and I'm going to use these as dowel pins. So, there we go. That should fix and align the, the the tilting bolts here once and for all. And we drilled through on the back side so we can use a thin punch and knock them out again. So 
I think we're now we're really done for this episode. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.